Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today is a very exciting day because I ordered a new machine. It is going to be placed back here by the press brake in the corner. Um, this machine is a 6x12 plasma table. Or it takes up a 6x12 area. It can cut up to a 5x10 sheet of metal. So uh, I'm waiting for the table to arrive right now. It's going to be shipped in a truck and it's going to be in parts. I'm going to have to put it together. It takes about 4-5 to five hours to put together. It has a water pan as well. So we will have to um, put a gasket maker between all the pans and stuff like that. So it's gonna it's gonna be a couple couple day project probably uh, just after work come out put it together and uh, see how it comes out. But I am extremely excited. So whenever it arrives, I'm gonna get it unloaded off the truck. We'll uh, unbox it and then I'll show you all it after I have it all put together. I'm not gonna sit y'all through that. Once we get done putting it together, though, we will be cutting out a little project piece that I have already drawn up on my computer. It's going to be a computer stand to hold the electronics and the monitor for the actual plasma table itself. So once it gets here, we're going to get it unloaded. So let's get right to work. So we got the table put together. It took about eight to 10 hours to put it together. I'm still waiting on the torch head to come in, which will go right into here. But everything was very simple. Uh, the instructions were very straightforward and easy to understand. The only thing that was not really explained in the instructions is what to do with all this wire over here. After you get done, all this wire runs all your motors and everything, and then they come out to here, which runs into your controller, which is under this piece of cloth, and then your computer and everything. So. With that being said, what I want to do is run all these wires, kind of like they did on the gantry up here, using one of these cable tracks. So I ordered three of them off of Amazon, linked them all together here. And what I'm going to do is essentially build the exact same thing as they did here, using the uh, one inch by half inch rectangular tubing, which I have laying down here on the ground already. And then I am going to also be building some brackets out of this four inch by eighth inch flat bar. It's going to bolt straight to the sides of these legs here. And I'm going to paint everything black or lime green. Not sure which color I'm going to do yet. Um, the other thing I did is I know I've noticed on the more um, high end tables that their bars are crooked or curved like this in an arch. Um, so I did that with mine. I just put some silicone under it and I have all these clamps on there holding it. It's been holding for like four days now. So I'm sure it's I'm sure it's ready to go. But the reason for that, I believe, is whenever you're cutting, if you're cutting a straight line, um, instead of running on top of this, just in case it lines up, there's no reason for you to be cutting through your metal and cutting on top of this the whole way across. At least if it's arched like this, you'll be cutting just a little bit on one side and a little bit on the other side if you're cutting all the way across. Hopefully that makes sense. But uh, I'm excited to put some water in this thing. We got all the silicone. You have to make sure you silicone all these joints and around all these bolts really well. Make sure no water will go through them. And then we have our green cutting liquid down there. That stuff is supposed to keep everything from rusting whenever you have the water in it. It's supposed to help. So with that being said, first thing we're going to do, start making these brackets here. I got to do two bins on them. Going to do them on the press over here. Should be pretty straightforward. So let's get right to work. So we got the brackets all made. We made three of them, and then we got them clamped down here on the bottom of the table. We got them welded to the half inch by one inch. So we just grabbed this piece of purlin we had outside, left over from the barn when we built it. We're going to use this as the cable track holder. And as you can see, there is a little bit of a gap, about an inch or so. I'm not too worried about that. My main concern is not allowing anything to hit this motor over here. So this inside edge of this purlin will protect it from hitting it. So other than that, everything is good. Uh, we're going to get this tacked up and get the holes drilled, bolted together and everything. Then we'll take it off, paint it black, and that will be it for this stage.
We got the bracket back on and painted. We used the existing bolts that came with the Premier Plasma CNC table. Um, they gave me a few extra, so we just used those so everything would match. And then paint everything glossy black. We also have ran the track already, and I made this little bracket here. And as you can see, I just threw some self-tappers in the top up here, and they will hold that bracket. So we have all the leads ran now in the cable chain and the power max sitting down there. I have all my wires just kind of laying everywhere, making sure everything works first. So we got everything hooked up into the control box here. So what we are looking at is we're in Mach 3 here. Uh, my mouse is going to go up on the Z-axis, which is going to be the torch. So that moves up, go down on it, it goes down. So that's all working really well. The other thing is we have X, Y, which I can use these keys on the keyboard to control. So go left on it, or right on it, go left on it, and then forward, backwards. Pretty simple. Everything's set up good there. We still need to set up the torch height controller, which is on that little tab right there. And it's all controlled with this button here and some stuff inside a mock. But that should be pretty simple. And what that does is makes you, or gives you the ability to cut warped metal and that is because whenever the end of the torch hits something, it clicks like that, and then it knows that it's hitting something. So that's all good. But before we start cutting and stuff, I do need to get the correct tip on the hypertherm torch. I do not have it right now, so I had to order that. I figured the torch would come with the consumables, but it did not. And then I bought these funnels off of Amazon. They're just... Uh, little foldable silicone ones and what I have seen is people cutting these and then slipping them over your torch here and it helps control the spray of water and the um, the sparks from getting all over your machine so we're gonna give it a try see how long they last So I've been doing some practicing this morning with the CNC table. We got everything set up. Everything's working pretty well. We've had a few problems so far, but I got the, the computer top cut out back here. It is 28 inches by 14 inches. Pretty simple. Just rounded the corners on it. But the next thing we are going to cut out is the computer arm, which is going to be holding the table. So that's what it's going to look like. Uh, this part down here is actually going to hook onto the leg. This part here will hook onto the computer tabletop. So, we got a sheet of metal laid up here right now. Everything, like I said, everything's been working good. I need to put some more um, cutting liquid in here because it is not completely full like it should be. But I had a slight leak the other day under here. It looks like it's doing good now. It's not leaking anymore. Um, I'll put some more silicone on it. But we're going to cut out this sheet here. It's going to start in this corner, cut it out. So, I'm going to put you all on time lapse so y'all can watch that. And that's going to be wrapped for this video. Thank you for watching. So as you can see, the computer stand arm came out looking really, really nice. I had to cut two of them out, though, because my air compressor was cutting on at 75 PSI instead of 95. And this hypertherm needs at least 90 to keep on running. So we kicked it up to 95. Everything's working really good now. But since this video is getting too long, we are going to end it here. In the next video, we will be finishing the arm here. It is going to be swiveling. So I have some more brackets I have to cut out, and then we are going to wrap this in some 2-inch flat bar to make it like a I-beam shape to give it a little bit more strength, even though it is pretty strong already. The other thing we might do is I, I've seen some things on the internet where I can 3D print a laser holder for the plasma torch because it is kind of hard to be able to see where the torch is lining up on the table. I have to run back and forth to be able to line it up. So that is another thing. I'm going to start looking into it right now, and we will try to get something like that made for it. So with that being said, if you'd like to see the next video, please subscribe to the channel. But other than that, God bless, and thank you for watching this video.